Hello everybody, uh, what's going on? Uh, Matt back here with another tutorial and today we're going to be putting the walls uh, around our box like I said in the last episode um, which will stop Kel from being able to get out of the area. So the first thing I want to do is uh, just double click on my floor so uh, everything's going to be relative to that and uh, just want to make sure my scales, just so it's a square, just it's a little bit easier to sort it that way. Um, as long as we're only doing this as like test things, it'll be alright. So we'll create a new cube and we will just stretch it until it reaches the edges um, and overlaps just a little bit actually. And then we'll also put it so it's higher. Doesn't really matter about the height, everything's relative to your own level, don't forget. Um, so don't use the kind of numbers off of my screen. Um, so we've got that one there and we will call that one wall and um, with that we will make a prefab over here and we'll also give it a tag of wall and then just add that to it there and that'll do like it did before and uh, duplicate it there so if we duplicate our wall um, and just bring it over and then um, same again but this time we'll rotate it um, 90 degrees and then bring it across and same again to make all of the walls and that'll be fine for me doesn't really matter it's not too doesn't have to be too specific we're just kind of learning things um, so come back into our, our characters and I deleted all the other Kells just because it's easier that way um, just for testing purposes and if we put him near the wall um, we can make it a bit easier when we're testing as well so if we look at our Kel um, one thing um, I didn't really consider when removing the rigid body is to do with the triggers because triggers only work if one of the objects is a rigid body now because our walls we don't want to be rigid bodies uh, Kel is going to have to be and that does mean that we've got to make it kinematic which basically makes it so it doesn't move um, and we'll take turn off gravity just in case as well and something else we need to add to Kel is a sphere collider now this is going to work the same as our um, jumping uh, collider so we're going to need to add it as well as the box collider we've already got and then we'll also increase the radius um, uh, I'll put my about three um, just so it's got a bit of a cushion around it. Now what this is going to do is it's going to pick up when it touches the wall and then it's going to do something to stop it from um, kind of hitting into the wall so then it's almost like the character can see that there is a wall and there's no point in walking right next to it. So we've got our collider and we're going to make it a trigger there as well um, and then inside our scripts we're going to have to mess around with some stuff. Now let's just drag this over to our Kel prefab to make to re um, reset our Kel prefab to our new um, object with a rigid body and a sphere collider with a, that's a trigger. Um, so yeah, so inside our scripts, um, inside our Kel move, we're going to need to add the trigger um, pickup thing. So let's to do that. I'm just going to copy it from our Joe move script. It's a bit easier to copy stuff than it is just to write it out straight. Um, so personally, I prefer to do that. Um, so let's put a bit of space in between. Now on trigger, when the other object is wall, um, we want it to um, add a new script and destroy this script. So we're going to go, um, in fact we'll go back to our Joe move and we'll copy it straight from um, the jump bit. Um, so let's put that there and so instead of having Joe jump we want to have it as um, Kel wall and then we want to destroy this so then it destroys this script the movements Kel movement script and we will add that after it's done with its uh, Kel wall script so we'll save that one let's check there's no errors no errors all good um, and then we'll create a JavaScript and um, we'll call that one Kel uh, wall like we did before like we wrote on the other one and uh, we'll open that one up and inside this one uh, in the start function we're going to want him to turn around 180 degrees so he turns away from the wall um, so we'll do that by doing transform 
rotate, um, and then 0, 180, 0, and then close that one off. Um, and then in our update function, we want him to constantly be moving. And in fact, we want him to be moving at the same speed that Kel move moves. So let's put that in there. So it's um, it's the divided by six one. Um, we'll pop that in there. And then um, obviously we also want our variable of move speed, which down here uh, gets changed to one. So we want it to be constantly set as one here, um, just because it saves having to put any other buttons in. Um, so that's working good. Um, and then also we want to make it so it waits for a little bit and then uh, creates the other script again. So we'll put another wait function in this script as well. Um, and we'll put that here. And we'll call that, uh, we'll put that inside there. Um, yield, wait for seconds. And then we'll put one for now, and then we'll go um, just like in the Kel move. We'll put well pr this whole thing basically, and um, change Kel wall to Kel move, and we'll save them. Check there's no errors, and actually it should work straight off. So if we just look at Kel, um, look at what he does. Now that has not worked. What it's done um, is it says that Kel wall doesn't exist, um, and that is because I have actually double s put two L's in the um, script. Now things like that happen a lot, and that's why I'm going to keep this bit in uh, because it happens a lot, and you, you need to realise that it's kind of all right for it to happen because um, everyone kind of makes typos all the time, don't they? So. Um, so let's press play again, Ch test it again, and this time um, it's done the same. Now I have a feeling uh, that is because I changed the wrong one. Um, so let's save that one and try it again. So he walked into it and he walked away, so, so hopefully he's going to do it again. Kind of watch it from here. quite a lot of these testing things it's better to actually make your own little test room because like things like this end up happening where it just keeps turning away um, which is how I want it to work in the game but obviously for testing purposes it's not that practical um, one thing we could do is obviously move all the all the walls closer to him um, there you go so he moves away I think one second is probably a bit too much um, so let's turn that down to just a little bit, so we'll turn it down to 0.7 um, and I think that should be alright so I hope that works for you guys too um, obviously changing the numbers to make it fix uh, fit how you want it to be is quite a key thing in, quite, in a lot of these videos um, so make sure you keep just playing around with it and also using these techniques to uh, with your own imagination to create some um, cool concepts um, yeah, so thanks for watching guys, and uh, in the next video we'll be putting uh, a GUI with uh, putting our score up on the GUI and um, playing it for a little bit actually. I think we'll put a, little, a bunch of the kills in and we'll collect them um, and see how that works. So thanks for watching guys, and I will see you next time.